So hello everyone. On behalf of Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage and the entire conservation institutes, I extend a very warm, warm welcome to our distinguished speaker, Mr. Mahalingam Vadivel, and everyone who has joined us for today's talk in Conservation Insights 2020 lecture series. I'm Dr. Padma Rohila, Director, ICI Delhi. Now to introduce our speaker, Mr. Mahalingam is a diploma holder in handloom technology from Indian Institute of Handloom Technology, Salem, Tamil Nadu, which he completed in the year 1974. Soon after, he worked as a supervisor in a few textile processing mills in and around Irode, which is 60 kilometers away from Salem near Coimbatore. In the year 1978, he joined Weaver Service Center, Kolkata, as a technical superintendent processing. Weaver Service Center was set up by Ministry of Textiles, Government of India, to render technical service to handloom weavers. After serving three years there, he was transferred to Kannur in Kerala. There he served for 15 years, then in Chennai in Tamil Nadu for 14 years, and finally in Bangalore for two, year, two and a half years. During this tenure, he also completed his post diploma in textile chemistry in the year 1985-86. He retired from the Weaver Service Center as Assistant Director Process. Now, during his tenure, he trained around 1,200 students in synthetic dyeing and printing, around 200 students in vegetable dyeing. He also started after retirement a small dyeing and printing unit in Salim, which unfortunately he had to shut down. But during this one year, he was able to dye and prepare more than 100 shades of fabric and block, block printed around 16 cotton handloom sarees. Except a few sarees, all had been sold out. Now today's talk is about natural dyes and the applications to cotton. The lecture will focus on natural dyes, their sources, their significance today, the advantages and disadvantages of both natural and dyes and synthetic dyes will be discussed. Above all, we'll see the colors obtained on cotton, for cotton fabrics using various dyes which he himself experimented and some of the shades that he had prepared. Before I invite Mr. Mahalingam, may I please request all of you to switch off your microphones. As such, we'll be having a lot of difficulties uh, in hearing the speaker because we're adopting a different method. And uh, we'll take the questions at the end of the talk. And also have a brief announcement to make. Uh, unfortunately, our speaker for the Friday lecture, Dr. Sharda is not keeping well, she's undergoing medical treatment. So she won't be able to give her talk. So we'll have Mr. Bijan Bijan Bihari Paul, again associated with the Weavers Service Center, who will be talking about materials and weaves in some of the important Indian textiles. So there's a change for the lecture on Friday. So now I welcome uh, Mr. Marlingam to start. Sir, I'll put the screen on. So I'll start sharing the screen. All of you, sorry for the inconvenience. So, our uh, topic is natural uh, dyes and their application to cotton. First of all, we must uh, know what are dyes about. Dyes are the substances which can yield color and has the capacity to, to uh, attach to a fiber. So, these dyes are derived. Uh, uh, naturally as uh, substances uh, that we get from uh, uh, plants and trees, uh, roots, bars, uh, stem, leaves, fruits, etc. On the contrary, in the synthetic dyes, we get the dyes from uh, petrol claim by products. Uh, the uh, uh, cold tar, cold tar dyes. Our uh, vegetable dyes dates back to the historic period. The first dye, uh, a cotton crop dyed in uh, red color, was uh, found in the uh, civilization site of uh, Mohenjadaro and Harappa. This civilization is 5,000 years old. So even at those times, our ancestors have learned the technique of uh, dyeing natural dyes. The civilization is 5,000 5, years old. Next slide, madam. Uh, 
madam madam you are, you are change the photo can i am going back no, uh, this, this is onion peel onion peel that uh, again uh, during cooking we are wasting the sorry okay upper, upper layer of the onion that gives the color So we need to. You talked about bubble. This slide. Bubble, bubble. Ah, uh, uh, it it is uh, bar bar coffee. Three. Ah, uh, it it is its botanical name is Acacia nilotica. It it gives a light brownish red for during night. Ah, uh, this is this is called nil or indigo. It is botanical name is the indigo para tinctoria. Which will give you a fast blue in uh, dye. It is the insoluble wet dye. So it requires a reduction process to make this dye water soluble. Then it can be applied onto the material. So this is wet bottom. Uh, this is the root root of your plant, golden uh, land ya ambalata, which will give a grey color during dye. Next, madam. Next. Ah, uh, this is black black color. Which is called the uh, coffee. This is uh, uh, this is made out of dye uh, plus uh, iron filings. Putting it together in a mud pot, it has to be kept for fermentation for fifteen to twenty one days to write the color. The, uh, this solution is called the coffee solution. It will produce a black shade when it comes contact. So it is myrobalan treated fabric. It's a fast black. Okay, brother. Next, next. Ah, this is this is a Rita, Rita, which is used for uh, making sugar cane to give leather. Its botanical name is Sapindus uh, mucrosi. If you put in water and shake the water, you will get the foamy layer. It acts as a soaking agent, detergent. Then this is this is the uh, alum, which which acts as the mordant between the dye and the substrate. It is potassium aluminium sulfate. It is the mordant for uh, natural dye. Another one mordant is ferrous ferrous acetate or ferrous sulfate. As I, as I already told you, the first synthetic dye was in, uh, discovered by William Henry Perkin in the year 1856. So after the discovery of synthetic dye stuff, uh, the usage of uh, natural dyes has uh, uh, come down because of its uh, synthetic dyes easy application and it is ready to use dye powder. It doesn't require any extraction of the dye. That's why the use of natural dyes have come down. Usage of synthetic dyes have gone up. Uh, in the preparation of synthetic dyes and the usage of uh, synthetic dyes, it uh, creates um, quite lot of uh, toxins and uh, carcinogenic gases. Because of this problem, the uh, uh, pollution in the groundwater, pollution in the air, the pollution in the air, all have happened. Now. Uh, even even the ozone layer got uh, hold uh, because of the chlorofluorocarbon. So it is the time now we have to uh, go back to nature to to reduce all these uh, pollutants because we have almost lived here. We have to leave this world. We, we have to leave this world to our youngsters in a less polluted manner. So it is better to uh, die natural dies. Uh, to some extent, we are not going to replace the whole synthetic dye the industry, which is not possible. Also, but to some extent, we can uh, by uh, applying the natural dye, we can uh, reduce the pollution in the atmosphere as well as for the environment. Okay, so, uh, synthetic uh, dye powder is a red powder. Uh, it is easily soluble. And we can get the color within 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and uh, one hour. But that is not the case with uh, a natural dye. It requires uh, the uh, application of uh, uh, myrobalan, which is this is called the pre-modern thing process. Then modern thing with any one of the uh, metallic modern alum or ferrous. Uh, Other modern are also available like uh, uh, copper sulfate, uh, potassium dye. 
dichromate is fluoride. This copper sulfate, uh, potassium dichromate, and D chloride are heavy metals which are banned by the international community for the sake of pollution. So, only the permissible models are aluminium sulfate, which is called as alum, and the ferrous sulfate or ferrous acetate. If you use alum, the shade will be brighter. If you use the ferrous acetate or ferrous sulfate, the shade will be blacker, which will be very dull in color. So I have tried by using alum by around 120 shades uh, in the vegetable dyes. So the uh, pre-treatment of the material for the uh, yarn for natural dyeing is the first start with covering. Covering is the process wherein the uh, impurities, uh, wax, oil, uh, fat matter, fat matter, and uh, pectins, which are there in the um, uh, uh, cotton material or cotton fabric, uh, with, with this will not allow the water to get in. It is not water absorbent. It is not water absorbent. So these impurities to be uh, have to be removed in a process called covering. Next is after covering. Washing and drying. Then, if it is required, you can go for bleaching, or otherwise, directly it can be taken for uh, vegetable dye. The first treatment is pre treatment, pre treatment with myrobolan. The myrobolan uh, fruit is to be uh, broken, uh, bound it, and make the powder, and uh, previous days just soak in water. Uh, a material uh, liquor ratio of 1 is to 5 or so. Uh, if you are taking 1 kg of fabric, uh, take uh, 200 grams of uh, uh, this uh, myrobalan and soak in water previous day. Next day, just crush the uh, ingredients and take the extract. And after taking the extract, again pour water over that uh, myrobal and granules and again crush by using hand, crush by using hand and take the extract. So if you just do in the two times, that is there, whatever the tanning, whatever the tanning that is there in the myrobal would have come to the water. Then, don't uh, give your family 200 grams of uh, myrobal. This uh, extract is to be mixed with the uh, remaining uh, water to make it a little bit of water. In this tiny solution, you put your material after covering and drying and keep it for one hour. Keep it for one hour. Work the, work the material properly in that uh, tiny solution. After uh, one hour treatment, take it out, use well and put for drying in shade. This um, uh, tannin material, tannin treated material should not come in contact with the iron. If it comes in uh, contact with iron, it will produce a black or grey stain which will not go. So it is to be dried in uh, bamboos or plastic uh, rods. Okay. Next. After drying, this can be uh, taken for uh, 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 mordanting and dye. Mordanting, as I told you, you can either take alum, uh, not more than uh, 5 grams per liter. If it is ferrous sulfate, uh, not more than 0.5 grams per liter. So, dyeing. In, the, in this, uh, modern thing and dyeing can be done in the same uh, process. Normally, it can be done separately also, but if you want to reduce water consumption, time, uh, cost, everything, you can add the modern in the dye bath itself. So, Whatever ingredient you want to dye on the material, take that ingredient, pound to minimum particle size, I mean, crush to minimum particle size and soak it overnight. So, suppose if you have taken a uh, uh, polyca granatum, that is the uh, ana ring, uh, just make it uh, small pieces and soak in water. Uh, so, suppose you have taken uh, uh, 100 grams of material, uh, 100 grams of ingredient. Uh, 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 soak it in, in two liters of water. Next day, keep it in overnight. Next day, take the product and put it for uh, boiling for uh, 20 minutes. Take the extract, take the extract and mix it with the remaining quantity of water. That is, suppose if you have taken uh, one kg of 
of uh, yarn or fabric. Uh, 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 material to liquor is equal to one is to twenty. Uh, whatever the quantity that you have taken as an extract, maybe if it is five liters, remaining fifteen liters of water to be taken. Fifteen plus five, twenty liters. You put that uh, base treated, that tanning treated, myrobalan treated fabric to this. Uh, uh, before entering the material, you have to add alum. That is one to five gram per liter. If you add one gram per liter, the shade will be lighter. If you add five gram per liter, the, the shade will be darker. So it is modern thing come dying. Modern thing come dying in a uh, single dry bath. So first start the dyeing in cold and uh, put the material and work the material for five to ten minutes in cold and uh, keep this dry bath over a stove and raise the temperature to. 85 degrees Celsius within a period of 20 to 25 minutes. And after having that 85 degrees centigrade uh, temperature, uh, work the material for another 15 minutes. So whatever the dye that has uh, there, that is there in the dye bath would, would have been taken by the material. Then remove the material from the dye bath, use well and put it for air drying in shade. Okay. This is a model dyeing. So uh, after drying, on the next day, take the material, uh, wash in uh, water one or two times, and uh, give a fixing treatment. Give a fixing treatment with the banana tree stem solution. Banana tree stem solution by taking a quantity of 25 ml per liter or 50 ml per liter. Suppose if you have taken uh, uh, 1 kg of fabric for dyeing, 20 liters of cold water is to be taken. Accordingly, you are the banana stem solution added in the cold dye bath. Work this dyed material after washing for 10 minutes thoroughly, then take it out and squeeze food for dry. After this is the fixing treatment which enhances the washing process of the dyed material. Suppose if this uh, treatment is not given, the washing process may come to two to three. If you give this fixing treatment of banana stem solution, you will get a uh, testing uh, rating of three. That I have tested it in our uh, laboratory. I am I got the result. It, it is working well. In the case of fabric, in the case of fabric. Uh, 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 this is the fixing process after after dyeing after uh, uh, dyeing and drying uh, take the material for washing and prepare a, a gold uh, old bath with uh, gold water and add to that this uh, banana stem extract for one liter twenty five ml or fifty ml stir well and put your dyed material in that for uh, five to ten minutes remove. Excuse and take for soaping. After fixing this process, if at all any uh, unfixed dye particle is there, that is to be removed by yes, a soaping treatment. For that, you take a warm water of 50 degrees Celsius to a material to liquid ratio of 1 is to 20. Into that, put 1% uh, or 2% Rita. And you will get a soapy solution in that. Put your uh, fixing uh, 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 material for 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, so, dry and remove. Wash in uh, cold water twice. Excuse and dry instead. This completes the natural drying process. Suppose if you are taking a fabric, suppose if you are taking a fabric for natural dyeing, so uh, it, it may contain starch. So, you have to start. We we'll start the process by doing desizing. For desizing, it is required to take bioenzymes because we are doing uh, natural dyeing and vegetable dyeing. So you should not go for uh, synthetic enzymes. You have to go for a yeah, bioenzyme. Do the desizing and do all the processes that is done for uh, cotton yarn, like covering, uh, uh, bleaching is necessary with the hydrogen peroxide, or natural way of bleaching is also there which is done with, uh, by using cow dung, 
soaking in uh, uh, in overnight covered and mixed with water uh, so this covered uh, fabric into that or yarn into that for one hour take out skew skew out well and wrap the material in a polyethylene cover keep overnight next day take the material in washing skew well and put the material in a grass floor or uh, wherever uh, little grass or little vegetation is there and the, in the floor put the material allow to dry in sunlight once it's dry dry you just uh, spill water over that and allow to wet again it will get dried after one hour then uh, spill water cold water into that so this process is to be continued from morning to evening and this process of uh, uh, cow dung dipping is to be carried out for 5 days in the same bath you dip the material after first day uh, sunlight dry then dip, dip it in the same uh, cow dung uh, for one hour then skew and wrap in the polythene paper and keep it overnight next day wash and put it in uh, grass floor for uh, uh, sun dry this this uh, process to be carried out for four or five days to get a natural bleach material next madam so this is the uh, the first uh, shade is first and uh, 100% cotton handloom fabric for uh, dyeing after uh, desizing i have treated the material with uh, 20 grams per liter myrobalan uh, in cold and uh, got it dried and i have taken 20 grams of uh, 20 grams per liter uh, um, uh, myrobalan uh, sorry sorry uh, this anar uh, anar print taken dried in uh, small particles uh, Uh, put it in cold water overnight the next day i have uh, boiled it for uh, 30 minutes i have taken the extract of that uh, ingredient and uh, i have made the dye bath suppose if i had taken 1 kg of uh, material uh, 20 liters of dye bath is required so if to that you, you add this uh, dye extract totally making to 20 liters so in this dye bath you have to add a mordant it may be alum or it may be sara sulfate If it is, I have taken alum. Alum maximum of five gram per liter. For one liter, five gram of uh, uh, alum. If it is for twenty liters, twenty into five, hundred uh, hundred grams of alum. Then alum make it powder and pour into this dry bath. Stir well. Then take out the myrobalan and printer, tanning printer material after drying. Just uh, dust it off. And uh, stretch it and put this dye bath in cold and dry for ten minutes. If you think, if you just uh, start from the dyeing at temperatures, it may produce unlevel shades. So it is better to start the dye by dyeing in cold temperature or room temperature. After working the uh, tannic printer material in this dye solution for uh, five to ten minutes, keep this dye bath. Over a stove and gradually raise the temperature to near boiling. At that boiling temperature or 90 degrees Celsius, continue the drying for 15 to 20 minutes. So during this period, you just turn the material properly so as to get uniform shapes. So whatever the drying content that is there in the 20 liters of water would have been taken up by the material. Then take out the material from the dry bath. Use well and put for drying in shade without washing. Washing should not be done on the same day after dyeing. Whether it is yarn or fabric, you should not wash it on the same day. It, it has to go for washing and fixing on the next day only. So in the next day, uh, as I have already told you, uh, give, uh, give a washing treatment. Then give the fixing treatment of the banana stem uh, extract solution in cold for five to ten minutes. Then remove, wash, do it in a soapy treatment uh, in warm water by using Rita one to two grams per liter or one to two percent for five to ten minutes. So whatever the dye particle that is uh, unseen there that will come out, then give the washing treatment with uh, one or two times with cold water, juice and dry. The second shade is 
guide will say Chaya Veer, his uh, botanical name is uh, Olden Landia Ammaleta. So it's a, it's a stem of a plant. The, uh, it is, you can take and uh, crush it in small, uh, small particle size. And in the same way, you can continue the dye. So it gives a uh, orange pink color. The third one is, it is, a, uh, it is Rubia cordifolia, the natural alizarin, Indian madder, which will be the red color. The other one is, uh, the fabric dyed with the suppen wood, Esilpinia suppen. So this will be a magenta shade. So this fabric is dyed with the Kurkuma longa, that is turmeric. Of course, it is a fugitive in light, so it doesn't have a light fastness, it doesn't have a washing fastness. To improve its uh, fastness, you have to give a fixing treatment, as I have told you, as I have told you already. The next one is onion peel, onion peel, allium stepa. Sorry, I missed a slide, I missed a slide. Next one was this. I got an exercise. Hello? Yeah. Uh, uh, the right one is turmeric, the other one is uh, the, the vegetable, the red jigard is there, the red jigard. Uh, this is alien sapa. The onion peels, the outer layer of the onion which we are wasting, that is collected, used for dyeing. Is the modern. This is Surli Patai Onasmus Onasmus Ectodius. It's the botanical name. It's, uh, it is also root of a plant. Hibiscus, hibiscus. This is uh, 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 the natural inoxia. The plant plant is also there. It gives an yellow color. It gives an yellow. so many yellow colors are available in natural dyes. So many brown colors. Uh, a good number of uh, red colors. But of course, only one blue. Uh, it, it is dyed. Uh, it is dyed. It is just it is dyed with. Uh, Husk, the coir, coir, coconut husk, which we are, is which is used for making a uh, rose. The the next one is mur murkambu. In, in Tamil, it is called murkambu. Uh, uh, in English, it is called mudu flower. Uh, yeah, it, uh, botanical name is Erythrina variegata. Erythrina variegata. It gives a yellow shade. For all these things, you can give the fixing treatment which will enhance the washing process of the dyed material. So, the first one is dyed with beetle leaf. Since it is a uh, raw beetle leaf, I have taken 100 grams of per liter. 100 grams per liter. The dried one, dye, uh, dyeing ingredients, dried one, which are uh, stems and uh, roots, I have taken 20 grams per liter. In this case, it is uh, with water. It's not not dry, so I have taken 100 grams per liter. Next one is henna. It is dried with henna seeds. It's 20 grams per liter. It is also giving a, a brownish red. Brownish red. Now uh, this is this is dried with gooseberry. Gooseberry. Uh, this is uh, uh, a ridge, ridge guard, vegetable ridge guard. Its leaves are taken uh, for 100 grams per liter and this shade was produced. Uh, this is a red, red daughter, red daughter. It is a mineral dye. It is 
So this itself has act as a, as a color. That is hydrogen treatment and alum treatment. Both join to the it gives a color which is fast. And the next one is indigo dye. The natural indigo is a red dye which is not soluble in water. So it is a red dye. It is uh, to be solubilized by adding uh, required chemicals. I have done only chemical processes. If you want to go for the uh, natural reduction process, it is, it is a uh, tedious process, and we have we need to have a setup of uh, mud pot, a capacity of uh, 100 liters or 200 liters. It's just you are able to see diapers that buried in the ground, a capacity of uh, 200 liters each pot will have. So you need to have 10 pots minimum a maximum of 25 or 30 whatever the quantity of uh, dyed material repair you can increase the dye parts so uh, it is uh, this uh, 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 mud parts hydrogen vessel parts are not available in the market may not be available so you, you have to give order to the particular part making people and get it done madam madam just show the indigo indigo this is a dyed piece, the other one is a cotton sari. It's a cotton piece, that is a, a, a indigo dyed cotton sari. This first one is dyed with 10% indigo, with a caustic soda and hydros as a reducing agent. And I'm not seeing the, this. First one is 10% indigo and dyed, dyed for a fourth. Four dish. As far as the indigo is concerned, the dye buildup is not happening with single day. So you have to dye for five minutes and put for oxidation. Put, again, put for dyeing for another five minutes and put for oxidation. This one uh, dyeing and one oxidation is called one dip. Eh? So the first material is given four dips in the chemical process. So this is they are they are doing the dyeing in the dye house while uh, 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 using a uh, uh, I mean uh, metallic mat metallic mat. Wherein I think they are uh, they are doing dyeing for uh, two bundles of uh, cotton yarn with uh, indigo. The reduced indigo color is yellow. So if uh, if you add proper caustic soda and uh, uh, appropriate uh, hydros you will get a yellow color. After getting that reduction, it will take around 15 to 30 minutes for chemical process. If it is a natural fermented process, it will, it will take four or five days. So in this uh, chemical, in this chemical process, after the reduction, it will, it will take hardly 15 to uh, 30 minutes for reduction. Put your uh, stubborn material or bleached material and work the material properly and uh, take it out, put for uh, uh, oxidation. The yellow color, whatever there in the material, will get oxidized. It will, take, it will take oxygen from the atmosphere. Gradually, that yellow color will turn to blue color. So, after complete oxidation, again, the same material is to be immersed in the dye box and do the dye for another 10 minutes, then remove skews and put for air oxidation. That one dyeing and one oxidation process is called one dip. So to get a medium shade, at least you have to give four dips. To get a dark shade, at least you have to give eight dips. So this is a indigo dyeing of a chemical process. If it is a natural fermentation process, as I, as I already told you, you need to have uh, that air and part of uh, 200 liters capacity or 100 liters capacity and that is to be buried in the earth uh, surrounded with uh, uh, soil uh, mixed with the gold dung. The, the, I mean, air and part is sur surrounded with the, the soil uh, mixed with the gold dung. So that gives a special temperature for the reduction process. So other ingredients other ingredients like uh, this, this is a uh, cotton piece of uh, brown color dyed with acacia cabbage in a dyeing machine called jigger. 
So just to have more production, I have tried this uh, material uh, in jigger dyeing machine. Jigger dyeing machine is nothing but there will be a two rollers in the machine, and beneath the rollers there will be a, a metallic truss or a plastic truss which holds the dye liquor with the guide, guide rollers. Uh, the batch material in open width from one roller will pass through the dye liquor through the gate rollers to the other uh, uh, roller. Again, after completing one round, again the same uh, material again will pass through the dye liquor and come to the first roller. So, the, this uh, one uh, rotation is called one end. For a dyeing, at least 8 to 10 ends have to be given. It is, it is called jigger, jigger dye, machine dye. So, this is a natural dyes on cotton yarn. I have taken with the different ingredients. Cotton battery and uh, uh, coconut husk. Uh, these, these are uh, first two shades of red shades, which is dyed with alizarin. Of course, alizarin is, is a synthetic uh, matter. I want to see the shade how it comes, so I have tried with that. And this the right, right side green shade. Green shade is uh, dye. Green is not possible in dyeing vegetable dyes. First, you have to dye the material with indigo, so you will get blue color. Then over dye with yellow color by uh, doing uh, alum, alum plus any yellow color uh, uh, on the indigo dye material. Blue plus uh, yellow, you will, you will get green color. Direct green is not possible in vegetable dye. So, by two, two dyeing, indigo dyeing first, then yellow color dyeing, you will get a green. Taken in yarn, cotton yarn. So, these are uh, dyes, vegetable uh, dyes on silk yarn. On silk yarn, I have tried yellow, brown, and even in, uh, green by using indigo and yellow. Dyes on silk yarn. This is cotton. Uh, this is again uh, cotton fabric. The first one is dyed with anato, that is uh, uh, jabra, jabra seeds. Uh, Pizza, oral, and it is botanical name. That is uh, dyed fabric. The second one is it is a dyed fabric of uh, stuff and wood. Normally, marabolan uh, knitted fabric, uh, it will be dried and taken for uh, dyeing. In this case, after the treatment with the marabolan, in wet itself, I have taken the uh, uh, dyeing of stuff and wood. With wet fabric, wet fabric. So, uh, again, this is uh, block printed and hand printed. Uh, Cotton, 100% cotton handloom sari with vegetable dyes. Totally, I have done around uh, 60 uh, saris. Uh, uh, these, these are the blouses for that sari. The uh, uh, fastness ratings are really encouraging. It is not very poor. Let, 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 me, let me compare the merits and demerits of uh, uh, synthetic and uh, natural dyes. Natural dyes are well perform. Many, many companies are supplying in JP, Adderworth, uh, Lagnau and all. You can, uh, but if it, it is bit costlier, uh, around 2000 rupees per kilo. But these raw ingredients are uh, I bought from the market. It is ranging from 50 rupees to uh, 800 rupees per kilo. Only indigo is costing around 1,500 rupees uh, to 2,000 rupees per kilo. Other things are only 300 rupees per kilo, uh, 400 rupees per kilo, uh, 250, 300, uh, 600. Likewise, it goes on. So these natural dyes are also available in standardized uh, powder form. Uh, if at all, if your buyer needs that, you can buy and do the dyeing process as buyer, as per buyer recommendation. I, what is the necessity to go for natural dyeing in the present scenario? Because the use, the 
production and usage of uh, synthetic dyes produces carcinogenic gases and toxins, and um, the ecology is damaged, the environment is damaged. So just to uh, to make it to a lesser extent, to make the pollution, to redu reduce the pollution, if you just switch up, switch over to dyeing of uh, uh, cotton or other textile materials uh, by using natural dyes, I think uh, we can reduce the pollution. Uh, so we can have a, a less polluted uh, earth and leave the less polluted earth to our younger generation that are to come in the years. Thank you. Um, thank you. There are some questions. Uh... I'll read them out. Ready to, ready to, ready to okay, I'll, I'll go from screen sharing and you can listen and you can answer. I'll read out the questions. Thank you everyone for your patience. I'm sorry we really did try, but this was the only way. I hope it was not that inconvenient. But please do keep typing in your questions. They'll be answered. Uh, he'll be answering them. Is there? So the first question is hibiscus dye. Does it come from the flower or the root? It is, it is from the flower, dried flower, madam. Okay. Uh, what is the P? Okay. What is that? What is the P? What? No, no. What is the P? After alum, you wrote P. What does that P mean? That is P means another one alum is there that is used for uh, naphthal dyeing. It is potassium aluminium sulfate. So P is for potassium aluminium sulfate. Potassium, potassium, potassium. Yes, aluminium. yes, yes. Another one, an aluminum sulfate is there. That's a different chemical. This is potassium aluminum sulfate, which is also called as alum. Okay. Uh, it's an antiseptic. Uh, okay. In saloon and all, they will use for uh, after shave, after shave uh, this thing. Yes. It's an antiseptic. Thank you, sir. Then the next... Potassium aluminum sulfate. Okay. The next question is... How, uh, uh, to know different natural modems which give good results in cotton. What are the different natural modems one can use to give good results in cotton? The natural modems you can give the even uh, uh, that's uh, uh, natural modems. You can the castor oil is there, like castor oil, groundnut oil. That also uh, it makes uh, uh, a complex substance in there. Uh, so that also can be used as a model. Okay. Uh, next question. Any mm. treatment that can be done to ensure that these dyes do not bleed or fade and last long? And what is the life of these dyes on clothes when used for painting or designs? How long do these dyes last on clothes? And what can we do to ensure that they don't bleed? They don't bleed. On the material you are asking? Yes, on cloth, on materials. It will withstand uh, 10 to 15 washes if you do the mild soaping technique. You cannot uh, do the soaping as you do for synthetic uh, dye materials. You have to use only mild soap with low alkali concentration or do the soaping with uh, Rita uh, in cold temperature and uh, put the material in for drying in shade. So definitely it can withstand 10 to 15 washings. Okay. Now what kind of no, vessel? Don't, don't, do, don't do severe washing as you do for synthetic dyed materials. Okay. This is very important. Okay. So then, next question. Thank you, sir. The next question, if you are dyeing with natural dyes, what kind of vessel is recommended? Aluminium or steel? Better, better vessel is copper vessel. Copper vessel made out of vessels that are made out of copper. Okay. Uh, when you do dyeing, does it smell like hina and all if you use? Is there a question of smell coming when you use these natural products for dyeing, especially hina? What, 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 is, what, what does the ingredient you smell? Henna, henna, mehendi, if you use that for dyeing or any other material, what, what is there a smell? No, I, for, my, for my experience, I have not smelled anything bad. Okay. Okay, next question is, um, 
is the change in shades and properties uh, does there is there a change in shades and fasteners properties if we fix dyed samples with banana sap juice stored for 10 15 days instead of fresh banana juice is there a difference if we use fresh juice and if we use some but juice if you, if you keep the banana stem extract for 15 days it will get spoiled so that the property will not be there staining property will not be there so for every time you have to take a fresh banana stem solution okay next question okay, okay. next uh -huh. next question is uh, what can be used to fasten the color for turmeric? It, is, it has very poor fastness property. When you dye with yes, turmeric... Yes, yes. Uh, like even, uh, light fastness is very poor. Washing fastness is also poor. But if you just treat with this uh, banana uh, stem extract, to uh, some extent, uh, it can be uh, the washing fastness uh, can be increased. But it, it, uh, it, it is not advisable to go for it. Because... It has got poor uh, washing fastness as well as light fastness. So you go for other uh, yellow colors which are little faster than this uh, turmeric. Okay. Like uh, metabol and uh, uh, leaf cards. This um, uh, I don't know, rind. So next, and so on. Okay. The next question is... So, it, so many yellow colors are available like that mango. Mango okay. wood dust, jackfruit tree wood dust, all will be yellow colors. So many yellow colors are available in natural dye. Okay, thank you. The next question is, if you suggest copper vessel as the ideal vessel, wouldn't it mm. react? Wouldn't it react with the color, and would we be getting darker shades no, or no, no, no. change in when shades? We, see, we have no chemical in this process. All are vegetable ingredients which are used for preparing Ayurvedic medicines. All the ingredients which, which we are using for vegetable dyeing or natural dyeing. All are used for making Ayurvedic medicines. So no, no harm, no reaction that will take place in the vessel. Okay. So are you email, can, can you repeat your email ID? People are asking for email ID. Can you just, uh, it's in the uh, phone. Mahalingam. I can't take it out. So Mahalingam. Uh, Mahalingam, W-S-C. M-A-H-A-L-I-N-G-A-M. W for work. Yes, for for center. Huh? W, okay, I just wanted to confirm that because it's in my phone and I'm using my phone. So everyone, any questions, please type in. So, Sorry for the inconvenience no, cost. No, it's okay, sir. It's okay. Because I think of my uh, no 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 problem at all. I think we managed the talk somehow. Bye everyone.